the Stuarts. It came in with a lass by Mike Walker. The story of Mary, Queen of Scots. Clear. Now? Now, Majesty. Down. Hurry. We've hardly a breath to reach the boat. The moon. We have to take the chance. It's now or never. In the boat, Majesty. Hurry. You'll be safe. In this world, never. Go now. God bless you. Who goes there? A ball, man. Ball for the Queen's life. Oh, they have him. They're coming. Oh, God, help your servant, Mary. Who she was? You want to know who she was? Many men and women do, but few enough know as well as I know. Oh, they'll give you a hundred answers, a thousand, and they'll all be right, and they'll all be bollocks. Bothwell was a man before ever she came home. I was her mother's man, Mary of Guise, a regent of Scotland. Aye, but I was never, ever her brother's dog, that sheet-strained commonwealth they call Jamie of Murray. Half a king's son and all a greedy, arrogant, treacherous wee bastard. Who was she? She was my sister. She was Queen of France for a year and a piece. She was... At the beginning, when we met that day outside saint Dizier, widowed, she was returning to Scotland. She was 18. She was a lass. There was so much she didn't know, so much that rested on those lovely shoulders. And she was lovely. And... So very, very alive in those days of innocence. That's an awful big mouthful, Brother Jamie. Oh, so you can still talk like a lassie then. Si vous le préférez, mon frère, le français suffira. But since I am Queen of the Scots... You are set on it. God's true anointing. There's no choice. And that's an awful big mouthful for a lassie. A lassie who happens to be your queen, sir. And here I kneel, madam, your subject and your servant. Be assured of my duty and my love and all of my service. Can I get up? I'm kneeling in a puddle. <laughs> of course you may. Here, you can ride with me. Shall I send for new hose? I'll cope. I'm used to wet knees. I live in Scotland. And I haven't for so long. The folk will welcome you. I'm afraid of many things, but never of honest folk. Well, it's complicated, Mary. Those things are, I find, but an honest heart. And, Jamie, my heart is honest, and I do want to do the best for God and my country. Even if you'd rather I stayed in France. Man plans. God decides. You are my queen and my sister, and I'll stand by you, now and forever. But there's a powerful lot you need to know. I've nothing better to do to pass the time. You're 18 and you want to talk politics. Ah, you forget, brother. I was Queen of France for a year. Over there, we ate and drank politics. And there's no reason we shouldn't have some fun along the way. So, the Lords of the Congregation... ...bid to overthrow my mother's regency, yes? To save the true religion. Even though most of the folk still cleave to the old religion in their hearts? More wine for the earl. The Kirk rules men's hearts, sister. Not the Pope. Slander. To the Kirk, then. Wait. Wait. And... Oh, what do you think about that? Not certain it's fitting for a lady to play the golf. Oh, nonsense, Murray. Hit the ball. Let me get my eye in. About England. No fear. You made me miss my shot. <laughs> nonsense. Come on. I fear the French think we're mad, clouting a wee ball with a long stick. France, I know. Tell me about England. England sees Scotland as her backyard. She doesn't own us, but she has a great interest in everything that happens and 
no lens, no lens. We can do very little that does not take account of that simple and brutal fact. Mm, they've their finger in our pie, then. They've their whole bloody hand in our pie. Then we must shift the pie. That is the whole of our policy, Majesty. It's why we signed the Treaty of Edinburgh, throwing down the old alliance with France, making new ties with England. And agreed that the Queen of the Scots would have no claim upon the English throne, even though she has a better claim than the peery ass lady who sits upon it now. <laughs> More or less. Ah, there's your ball. Looks like you'll be getting your hose wet again, Jamie. I won't sign that treaty. The Queen is God's appointee, not man's. Or oh, that woman's. The captain tells me the heart is set. We can't land until it clears. I can barely see my hand in front of my face. Good practice. Step very carefully. I won't give up my religion, brother. I will worship how I wish. The Kirk have agreed. You and your people may hear mass and pray as you choose. Will they stick by their word? The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. Canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. What? I can hear, Mary, and I can tell. And I believe they will if you, in your turn, go with the wind, not against it. Hmm. And yet here we are, becalmed by the wind and enshrouded in mist. I will see the captain. Lost in the mist. Strange days, Majesty. Whoever thought we'd come back from France in such a way? Unknown, unnoticed, and celebrated. <laughs> Do you regret it, Flam? God's will, not mine. But I do regret it, in a way. In a way, so do I. These are going to be strange days indeed, Flam. And here we are, lost in a mist. And all alone. Who was she? I believe she was Meliacine. And you all know who she was. Old Nick's daughter. So she was. So she was. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Amen. In troibo ad altare Dei. Ad Deum qui laetificat juventutem meam. It is said. Authority should be denied a woman because she should be in subjection to man from whose rib she was born and whose fall she brought about. For death entered this world through her and there is no boldness that should be permitted to her and she must be in humility. Confiteor Deo Omnipotenti, Beate Marie Semper Virgin, Beato Micheli Arcangelo, Beato Giovanni Baptiste, Sanctis Apostolis Petro e Paolo. There is only one God, and God is his name, and he will not be mocked. But there are those that mock, and chief among these is the whore of Rome, who this holy Sunday flaunts her perverse and filthy practices in the heart of God's city. If we turn and do not God's work, then what will be our punishment? I think on a tiny spider held upon a shovel over a roaring fire. So is man. And I tell thee, it is a fearful thing to be in the hands of the living God. Christ, I... oh, what, what, what is it? 
A stone, Majesty. Oh, away with you, man. I can see it's a stone. I'm not blind. Why is it? Oh, you'd best stay away from the window, Majesty. Oh, have they not come for a show? Well, let's give them something to look at, shall we? I beg. You must not, Majesty. Must, Sir Priest. You say must to a Queen of France and Scotland. Open the window, Flam. Here you see me. I am your queen. There is no wrong in my heart or my house. Only love for you, my people. I will serve you and serve God with all my heart. That I swear. Go to your houses. In God's peace, go! They're going. There were no cheers, Flam. But no more stones. They'll be back, Majesty, at their master's command. Then we'd best see about that, had we not. Murray? Madam, I'm at your service. Not yesterday you weren't. We were scathed by a pack of dogs. Maybe you heard of it? Ah, the honest folk. But it should not have happened. The Queen was to be allowed her mass. Allowed, Jamie? You know it. Uh, it seems what's known in this country is often enough put by. A scheme was worked with Mr Knox. He didn't like it, but agreed to stand by it. You know, I arrange things for your satisfaction and not his. He would have had you sitting in the kirk on a wooden bench, getting splinters in your white ears, cursing bishops and drinking water. So you say, brother. I can assure you, sister, I have only your best interests at heart. And my heirs too, I dare say, Murray. I believe Dr. Knox is without. Without manners, to be sure. Shall I call him? I dare say you should. Mr. Knox! John Knox! I'm here. <clears throat> Madam. Domini. You don't like the Queen, it seems. I have nothing against Your Majesty. Well, you could have fooled me. I have only ever used the arguments God hath given to man through his holy prophets and the disciples and evangels of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they tell you that a woman ruling is repugnant to nature, causes the overthrow of order, fairness and justice, probably curdles cream, that woman was made to serve man and obey man, and that she's too busy being a mother anyway. Have I missed anything? A great deal. Well, that is by way of the infirmity of your hasty sex. It is in the good book, madam, and cannot be unbooked. Jesus Christ is my witness. You say I have no authority to rule? If the land is content to be ruled by a woman, then I shall be as content to live under your grace's rule as I would to have lived under the Emperor Nero. What? What are you saying? Come on now, Mr Knox, don't be shy. It doesn't become you. I have read the book. It was written against Mary Tudor of England, who you'll recall was a Roman Catholic and did all she could to return that nation to the idolatry and sin of papacy. Plain it is that women are commanded to be in humility and subjection. It is not permitted for women to speak but to be in silence. Here Ambrose includeth all women. <laughs> Your words, not mine. The words of St. Ambrose, I believe. Aye, you believe. You believe that subjects may throw down a monarch anointed by God. The Bible says, if princes are sinners against the law and the land, then they may be put down. It is even so between parents and children. The child must obey, but if the parent falls into a frenzy of madness, then the child must restrain them from committing the follies that may ensue. Watch your tongue. It's a queen you speak to. And God I speak for. 
It seems that my subjects must obey you, Mr. Knox, and not me, and shall do what they want and not what I command. What is it that so offends you in a woman? Is it a woman herself? Speak as you list, sir, since it seems you command here. I have nothing against a decent and modest woman who does not display her weakness to corrupt decent men. What, is it my bubbies, then? Oh, it is, isn't it now? <laughs> it is well known that Popery and Richard will so inflame the lusts of the female that she has not one whit of control over her intellectuals, such as they are, or her body, but like the vile octopus of the deep grips fast virtuous men with her tentacles of temptation and draws them ever toward the slippery maw of damnation. I believe the octopus has a beak, Domini. So my teachers in France told me. Papers to a man, I dare say. You dare say a very great deal. We shall speak again. You will not find me changed, madam. I am steadfast in God. Then you may leave us. Mr Knox. When I was a girl in France... I went on pilgrimage. Oh, no great thing. But I walked every day for a week to a certain shrine. Except one day when I went in a carriage. And the stones of the road bruised your foot, no doubt. The reason I rode, Mr Knox, is so that I could not puff myself up with self-pride and vanity and boast that I had walked every step of the pilgrim's way. It may surprise you, but in the Roman faith, self-pride is a sin. In the true religion, virtue is its own reward. Go! <laughs> Mary, don't cry. The man is rough and ready. And <laughs> come for yourself. You think I'm crying through fear, Jamie? I'm crying for the vexation. That man, Knox, is the most... Powerful man in Scotland. <laughs> God! Help me if it's so. She was a problem. From whichever direction you choose to look at it, she was a problem. Not because of who she was, but because of what she was. In the end, she was a problem even to herself, but uh, that came later, when her choices had been reduced to bad and worse. I knew her over most of her reign. Uh, I was, of course, never a disinterested observer. Well, who was? <laughs> who is? <laughs> I was English ambassador. Before that, I had, to tell the truth, uh, which, of course, in our profession we never do, furthered English interests in the North, paid over English gold. But that's another story. Then, Edinburgh. 1565. I was walking out one evening to take the air, or perhaps I was looking for a certain kind of company in a certain kind of district, when I found myself jostled by a passel of bravos full of spirit and spunk, strutting their stuff through those seedy streets. Uh, looks like an Englishman to me. Right. Looking for sport, lad. Uh, yeah, ha have a care, boy. You what? I I'm not without friends in this oh, town. I don't know without that. enemies in this town I, either. I, I don't want any trouble here. I can't hear you, Englishman. <laughs> you boys, you have your fun and I'll be on my way. Looking for our lasses to top, are you? Dip in your oh, way, is it? Just, uh, just stand now. away. Are you talking to me? All I'm saying is... I don't this. like you. <laughs> Do you like him? I don't like him. I don't like his big furry cloak. I don't like his big smirky face. In fact, I don't like him at all. Uh, I'll, I'll call for the watch. Have a care. No, you have a care, Tommy Randolph. Look, I... Uh, no! Bosoms! Oh. And, and no beard at all. Oh, we had you there. So you must admit it, we had you there. Majesty. Oh, uh, you make a handsome lad, I must say. Uh, and your ladies, too? Aye, and my Mary's all. <laughs> so, are you going to buy us a drink this cold night? Hot wine would be welcome, if the English exchequer can run to it. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Isn't it dangerous for you to be out like this? <laughs> Even given you're as tall as many a lad I know. We've been begging in rags, strutting in hose, mm. and so far no one has raised a hand against us, <laughs> Mr Randolph. <laughs> I think you have the wrong idea about Scotland. We are a peaceful people. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, uh, forgive me, Anna. <laughs> On the whole. Yeah. <laughs> or don't you agree, Mr Ambassador? Yeah, uh, perhaps since we're in disguise here, you could call me Thomas? I hardly know who is and who isn't in disguise here. Every noble in the land seems to be talking out of the back of his hand, none trusting the other, each only for himself. Even your queen, Thomas, says one thing to me and another to her council. Is it any wonder that sometimes I am all in a spin? You have a joysome court, madam. I I've never seen a better time. And I've seen many things. <laughs> and as for your Marys, why? <laughs> why, sir? <laughs> why what? It would be a positive delight to be rousted by such lusty lads. <laughs> <laughs> the Kirk says I love luxury more than... Enjoying another four-hour sermon from Dr. Knox. <laughs> You're a young woman, beautiful young woman, and a damn pretty lad, too. It would be a shame to hide that with a cloak and bonnet. Thank you, Thomas. Even if you are a Protestant. Yeah, but no Calvinist. I can sit with a bishop. You know, um, Queen Elizabeth offered John Knox a bishop prick. Oh, I doubt any prick at all would be of use to Goodman John. <laughs> That's not what I heard. <laughs> but but uh, enough of that. No, men will love you, madam. Do what you will. So they must do as men do. Until... Until I marry. It's what women do. And not what your woman does. I wish she would. Everyone in England wishes she would. But until she does, Thomas, there remains a thorn. Yeah, the Treaty of Edinburgh, which you still haven't ratified. How can I? It's not my claim. It's God's will that I sit on the throne of England if my sister queen dies unwed. If you were married, it is possible the accord could be rewritten. But married to who, Tommy? Well, well that's the question, isn't it? <laughs> And, but? And, but, marriage is a delicate matter. Your queen's daddy might not have agreed. Hmm? This country still remembers the rough wooings of his soldiers. Nothing delicate about rape and murder. I might have been a babe then, but I have not forgotten either. You know, times have changed. And men are angels now? Who may I marry, Ambassador? Anyone you like. So long as they're English. <sighs> France, <laughs> Spain, all those little duchies and principalities, um, all those complicated claims and alliances. Marry an Englishman, and it all becomes simple. Elizabeth will make a new agreement naming you or the child to be born as her successor. And does Her Majesty have any opinion of just who might fill my bed and belly? Well, Tommy Randolph, out with it like a man. <laughs> It, I say, out with it, and out it comes, and oh, it's a fine strutting little red rooster, is it not? God, those bloody English, they're so far ahead of themselves, they're coming round again. And I've tried, God knows, I have tried to be nice. She's my sister queen, and she comes up with something like this. Could she insult me any further? Could she insult Scotland any further? <laughs> Sure she oh, mean. she meant it, or she's running stark mad. And she's not mad, that I do know. They say he's a handsome man. <laughs> Darling Dudley. Oh, I've no doubt he's handsome enough for her. Now, wolves have ears in this town. Flamina, he's a second-hand cock. And though his comb may be the finest, it's combed another woman's bush. Wish girl, you think all men don't? All men save John Knox, I'm certain of it. But I'm not all women. Would you lie with your sister's cast off? Uh, does she even mean to cast him off? From what I hear... What do you hear? Uh, Tommy Randolph said it to your brother, but perhaps I shouldn't report gossip. Then I'll hear it from him. This proposed marriage to the Earl of Leicester... Ah, uh, that. That? Your sister queen has an idea that she should take care of all the expenses. Mm. Is she intending to pay for my household and the wedding if I go through with this? Not exactly your household. Then exactly whose household? It's only an idea and 
And not a very good idea, but Queen Elizabeth thinks it might might be pleasant if you all lived together. <laughs> Three in a bed? <laughs> God knows what's got into that woman. Oh, I know. Robert Dudley has. And she wants him to be the King of Scotland and still to be her cockerel. And what am I to be but another henny in the hen house? Nothing to say, brother. Very well, I shall marry whom I choose. I'll marry at home if I must. A good Scotsman shall be the king of a good Scots queen. How does that sound? A great perturbation is rising in heaven. The very existence of our kirk is under threat from the whore of Rome. Our birthright is to be stolen away for a mess of popery. And the people are to be enslaved in Babylon. And what in all of this of love, Domini? Did not our Lord command Think us... you that our Lord is a God of love? Think again, woman, for he is a God of wrath, and he will Gently, not... Gently, good doctor, Gently, there's no call to be shouting someone speaking to your queen. I dare say her ears are perfectly fine for any words you might have to offer. I speak not with the tongues of men, oh, but with the... trust me, John, you're no angel. My Lord Bothwell, we thank you for your words. I am but a rough man, Majesty, but you may always count on me as your man. I think we all know what we can count on you for, Bothwell, and it's not generally conciliation and restraint. Mr Knox, <laughs> since I returned, I have done all within my power to please you. I have not objected to your speaking against me or my advisers. I have given you an audience whenever you've wished it. I have not advanced the interest of my own beliefs one whit beyond what has been agreed. Domini, tell me, what business is my marriage of yours? If your majesty settles upon a Catholic marriage, no matter how old or right the family, this nation will be betrayed. And the very same God of wrath will cause you to end your days in sorrow That's and it. in... By God it is, Mr Knox. Give way, man. You cannot rebuke your queen in such a manner. Is there nothing I can do to please you? Madam, the tears of my own lads do not impress me when I have cause to whip them. No more do yours. I am going. But I say, think on Jezebel. Think on Jezebel. Mr. Knox, a moment. So? There was another matter. I am called to preach. It is a serious matter and cannot wait. A few months since, a priest of my household was grievously threatened by two members of your congregation. I do not recall. They were imprisoned? Possibly. And do you recall writing a letter saying they should be freed at once and, if not legally, by any means at hand? They were doing their Christian duty... It seems to me, Mr. Knox, that your letter, in your hand, signed with your name, could be seen as a call for arms to be used, to overthrow the proper offices of the state. I have consulted my privy council. They agree. It sounds like treason, Mr. Knox, and you will answer to it before the court. You may leave us now. You made me cry. Let's see if I can return the favour. Ah. 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 And uh, now I'm supposed to hit mine, Majesty? Ah, that's the idea, Ambassador. Well, I'm not certain it's such a good one. It's, um, it's very small. Uh... Oh, you do well for an amateur. Uh, not goof, madam. Though the traps and trips for the unwary player might be seen as, um, similar... <laughs> Go on. I'm wary of speaking after our last conversation, as it were. Ah, it appears your mistress has changed her tack on the matter once again. I doubt, to be honest, that she cares very much anymore for the idea of sending her Dudley north. She needs him at hand, as it were. This uh, business with Knox... Are you afraid of him, too? <laughs> you know I'm not. But there is the matter of the Protestant faith. 
I can't see why men and women may not worship how they wish in this nation. For most would follow the old faith. Then you cannot see men and women. Ah, your ball lies safe on the green. Ah, it is the tide of history. <laughs> I'm not sailing against that tide, Randolph. I just want John Knox to stop going on about what a major slut I am. The case goes. The matter will be settled. My brother Murray has promised to see it through to a good conclusion. Expect to hear any time that Mr Knox's next sermon will be to a stone wall. A few months of that should teach him manners. Hmm. I dare say it would. Ha! Ah, uh, your ball lies perfectly. I think you'll have this match, madam. If only your brother Murray played as straight a shot as you. Um, <clears throat> And uh, rather straighter than me. What do you mean? I shouldn't tell you, but you'll know it by tonight. The Privy Council will acquit. What has Jamie to do with it? He supports me on the matter. Knox has no liking for him. He's attacked him continually. Uh, not so much in the future, perhaps. Are you trying to put a difference between me and my brother? Majesty, there was never a sameness. You said it yourself. All against the other and each for himself. But not Murray. Not Jamie. Would you stand there, Ambassador? The sun is in my eyes. I can't see clear. Uh, Murray's done a deal with the Kirk. Knox goes free, and they owe him a very big favour, and everyone knows it. Sooner, though probably later, he'll call that favour in. Uh, is, uh, is this better? Thank you. I begin to see clear now. I shall face him down with this, Randolph. Uh, if I may, though I should not, but um, I have a kindness for you, madam. To appear ignorant when you have knowledge gives you strength. Jamie's been playing me. So, then I must learn to play him. Oh, good shot. I cannot depend on anyone. Y you do have friends. Do you think a queen ever does? Who am I, Mr. Ambassador? You tell me, because I don't know. I do things. I read books in five languages. Embroider, play golf, play music. I write letters and talk to men of affairs of state. But who is Mary lost in the mist? Flamina would say... I know the two of you are lovers, and I'm glad of it. She, at least, is discreet. And that love, at least, is true. She would say you are the bravest lass she's ever known and that you carry a weight that would crush giants. <laughs> and if only you could share that weight with a husband who was... Politically acceptable? But it's not impossible. And to me, what would he be to me? It was a stroke, I'll give her that. The English said she could not marry other than an Englishman. She chose one who was also a Scot, who had been born and bred in England. His dad was James Darnley, Earl of Lennox, one of the great lords of Scotland, also a great traitor. Tried to marry Mary's mother, then rebelled, then got exiled, and then he came home bringing his boy, Henry, along with him. Did Randolph have a hand in it? God alone knows what tunes that man's fingers plucked, and certainly not I. But if he did, it was, for once, a sour note. They were right. Who? Who said that you dance well, Majesty. <laughs> you too are very light on your feet, sir. Uh, my father tells me I'll need to be in this country. Oh, how is the Earl of Lennox? Oh, loving it. He's most grateful to be recalled. He waits to thank you himself. He said it was the completest thing, overturning his exile and allowing him back. Quite took the rug from beneath the feet of Queen Elizabeth, he says. Though he did wonder why, since he was no friend to your mother. This country needs to find a time when an angry glance is not a cause for drawn swords. And I had a hankering to see the son, who was, I am told, a man of all virtues. <laughs> They said you were beautiful. They did not say you were so clever. 
Also tall. <laughs> Is that a problem? Not at all. <laughs> and you, sir, how do you find Scotland? Wet. <laughs> But there are compensations. Do you play golf? I prefer <laughs> indoor games, madam. Uh, cards, then. I like to play myself. Yes, cards indeed, and other games. You are very bold. It is your beauty that makes me so. Besides, we're young and we can dance, so we should, whilst we may. And leave the grey beards to their posset and porridge. Well, it is a great adventure, isn't it? To be a king. Not all it's cracked up to be, sir. At least from where I sit on my throne. Oh, we'll just have to change that, won't we? <laughs> We may even make your grey beards take a merry step or two. Ah! Oh, <laughs> but now the music has ended. It never ends, Mary. The dance goes on forever, for those who can hear its music. Majesty. Your brother Murray, however, is, I fear, afflicted with deafness. A word, if I may disturb your joyings for a moment. Sir, your servant. I dare say, Murray. I dare say. Madam, you will excuse me. There are many lovely partners here tonight, but only one who will stay forever in my heart. Adieu. <laughs> Slimy little toad. Oh, I rather like him, Jamie. He is a pretty fellow. Looks like a bloody Jesse to me. Can't he grow a beard? Is there a problem there? You should think about that. It's not always about beards. My advisers tell me that in all respects he is manly. I'm your bloody advisor, and if you're really thinking what I think you're thinking, hmm? it won't do. The Earl of Lennox is not our friend. He's the friend of our enemies. Do you know how many Catholic lords have already pledged themselves to him? I'm a Catholic. Yes, but you're our Catholic, Mary, not the Pope's. That will not be the case with Lennox and his allies. They have a plan, and we aren't part of it. Speak for yourself, Jamie. I'll be Mrs. Darnley. He wants to be king. Well, that is generally the case when you marry the Queen. Not king to your Queen, but king for himself and the Lennox clan. Henry Darnley is not a nice boy, Mary. But then you're not a nice man, Jamie. You played me false over Knox. False to be true. You do not always know your best interests, sister. You mean your interests are my best interests? I beg to differ. He's bad news. One could forgive nasty, but nasty and stupid is terribly dangerous. You must see that. Besides, he's dipped his pen in half the ink wells in London. They say. Aye, he's a very literary young man. We're family. We have to stick together. Marry this boy, and you and the country will regret it. Through here, Jamie. Listen, I know you greybeards forever at each other's throat for the smallest inch in esteem and power. It's always been that way. You tell me it'll never change. Well, I tell you, it must, because times change, Jamie. And if nations do not, then they are lost in the storm. This is not France. With a husband as king by my side, I will command respect from all those who cannot countenance a woman on the throne. Then I will be able to rule as God commands. Do you really believe that cockchick, girly boy Darnley is fit to be the king of anything other than the Oxford? I will make him so. I will make him so. Love. In the beginning, I think she hoped with all her ardent heart it would be there. But hope for princes is a fairy ring that vanishes as the sun burns off the morning dew. Approach the throne. Kneel. By the authority placed in me by God and the the Kirk. I invest you, Henry Darnley, as Earl of Ross, and as such, to be of equal rank to the highest in the land. And thus, fit to marry a queen. Don't you wish you could get your queen wed so easily, Tom? <laughs> She'll never do it, Flam.、Hmm. 
Her husband is England. Her lover, Dudley. Well, since my lover is a dukey Englishman, I'm wondering if I'll see him and his great Tom Leach tonight. <laughs> uh, they'll be dancing. They certainly will. <laughs> Uh, but wasn't the Queen going to make him Duke of Albany also? That she was, but not today. She's taking a lesson from your mistress, Festina Lente. You were never slow in getting there, Flam. Not me, silly. Ah, <laughs> oh, he speaks. I swear in all things to be true to my oath, to my Queen, to my country, and to the Kirk. Where there was dissension, let there be unity. Where there was poverty, let there be plenty. Where there was despair, let there be hope for a new age of greatness. A very pretty speech. I'm a very pretty boy. <laughs> Pray hope it's not all skin deep. I believe the Queen wrote it for him. Or did you have a hand in it, Tommy? True? No. But it'll do. If he will do. But will he? <laughs> wine! Give me wine! <sighs> well, we showed them how to dance tonight, eh? Oh, we did. Although well, not everyone approved, I think. Oh, who cares? Drink to us. The king and queen. Uh, not yet, my dear. But soon, my dear. Uh, Henry. Mm. You mm. have a care. I do. For you, my sweet. Mm. We... No. Mm. Uh, not discreet. I am never discreet. <laughs> Come, sweet Mary. I will be your husband tonight, even if the Kirk has not yet sanctioned it. Oh. Henry, you forget yourself. That's what love is for. But not queens. The queen not obey the king. When we are married, I will be a proper wife to you, Henry. I swear it. And when will that be? When you make me Duke of Albany? We must think of England. I assure you, I do, stuck in this dreary shite hole. All things will come to you, Henry. Only wait a while. I don't like waiting! I will retire now. Perhaps you will be good enough to send my women to me. Excuse me, your signore. And you are? Her Majesty's new secretary. Uh, David Rizzio. And you're here because? I thought the Queen might need me. Well, David Rizzio. It so happens that I... I think I need your penmanship this evening. I trust you have a good hand. Perhaps you will accompany me. Bring the wine. And me, Lord. And someone call the Queen's women, will you? Oh, she knew. My Mary knew. He could not dance sweetly for more than a month or so before the rat was out. But by then, she'd no choice. She'd made her marriage bed and must sleep upon it. So, Scotland had a queen and a king. All rise! Their Majesties King Henry and Queen Mary of Scotland. God save the king! God save the king! God save the queen! God save the queen! I want them punished. Wine? All of them. Uh, not for me. And you'd best be careful of how much you drink. There is a long day yet to get through. <laughs> exactly. Come. Come! The Earl of Murray, madam. Shall we try that again? Uh, the Earl of Murray, your majesties. 
Madam, you called? Darnley. Do you want to be charged with treason, Murray? Is that what you really, really want? Do you know what I really, really want, Your Majesty? Actually, no. I don't care what you want. Brother, I think that... The only question here is what the King wants. Yes? Henry... Yes? There must be respect, Murray, from all. My husband, the King... Can speak for himself. He can certainly pour for himself. Have a care, Murray. You are not invulnerable. I am the King. Of what? My lord, of a united nation, one under God? Yes, Jamie. The state is at peace. There is a religious accord. Even John Knox realises that with a Protestant king on the throne, there is no threat to the Kirk. You know it. I know no such thing. Then you ignore it. I know you play religion for your own ends, Murray. There's one thing you want that you've always wanted. And it doesn't come from a bottle or give me the pox. <gasps> Jamie, you will submit and apologise to the King. I will not apologise to that beardless sword swallower. Before God, Murray, you will pay for that remark. Trouble is, sister, you've sold the nation for Lennox gold. There's nothing left. Henry, do not draw. You cannot brawl. You know, sometimes I think I'd rather be a Jakes in London than the King of Scotland. Which is something you will never, ever be, Master by blow We shall see about that. That you and whose army? And we shall see about that too. Does he actually have an army? Oh, he will soon enough. A quarrel never lacks for friends in this country. But Jamie... Of all people, for him to turn, do you see? I see. I'm a jealous man. There were always small betrayals between us, but never this, never rebellion. I thought, at the end, at the limit, I could trust him. Forget it. It's me and you. King and Queen. He has allies, Henry. Possibly more support in the country than we do. We could be in deep trouble. So... What happens now? Now, we send for Bothwell. This is where I come back into the story, and it seems to me the story was made for Bothwell, as the Queen was made to be mine. For in this world, a man is what he makes of himself and what he takes for himself. As for Murray and his bloody rebels, lords of the congregation, that piss-weak crew had tried every damn trick they could to exile me, imprison me, kill me, but no, Bothwell was back. My lord, well met. I came as fast as I could, Majesty. Sire, I give you joy of the morning. I thank you, sir. Your journey? The bloody English did their best to stop me getting here at your brother's request. Paid the pirate Wilson to waylay my ship. We got through anyway, and we'll get through now, Majesty, with you at the head of your army, with a pistol in every hand. <laughs> and I'll shoot if I must. You inspire the matter. Leave the shooting to me. I will, sir, if you will take command of the Royal Army. Uh, let us not forget, my dear, it is my army too. I think my father Lennox would make a better Captain General. His state is higher than this gentleman's. I must think on that, Henry. And well, you do. Murray and his allies have been chasing about making mischief. And that is not for me to remind you, sir, that if you had gone into the marketplace and shouted, I am the king, who will shed their blood for me? You might have got an idiot boy and a stray dog, but not much more. Bothwell! You will take that back. I say you will, sir. Then I will. Forgive me, sire. Very well. And if you'll just let me borrow this army to kick some hairy Scots ass before it vanishes in the heather. <laughs> you have a way about you, Bothwell. Take the army, but the matter of command... Can have... wait. Since we all know there is but one at the head of our company. And she's got bigger bollocks than any man in it. <laughs> Except me. Good speed, I'll be about my business, madam. Sir! Ha! 
I didn't like that. Your father will receive his proper due, Henry. Yes, I have no doubt of it, but you, Mary... I don't think your attitude was correct towards that man. Oh, the Earl of Bothwell. You were making up to him, for God's sake. He's my general, Henry. Your general and not your coxman. I don't trust him. Can we talk of this another time? We are observed. As you wish, madam. David! Majesty! Please to send a letter to the Earl of Lennox, stating I wish him to take command of my forces jointly with the Earl of Bothwell. <laughs> Quickly, if you will. Does that satisfy you, my lord? Mm -hmm. Thank you, David. That will be all. It will be done to your satisfaction, Majesty. Thank you, David. That will be all. There's only one of us who has dipped in Signor Rizzio's inkwell, and it's not me. And it's not me who placed the whore to anything... Well, anything male. Oh, weak, Henry. Weak. We must stand together, or we shall fall like sticks... Henry, whatever we may feel, we must make a brave show of it. Otherwise, who will follow us? <laughs> Where are they, my lord? Where is our enemy? You promised us a victory today. Where is it, eh? Bothwell, what is this? <laughs> Nothing! It is nothing. The great Earl has given us... Victory! We have the field. The enemy is fled. How so? The Lords of Congregation have slipped across the border. They had no stomach for a fight. They knew they would lose, and in doing so, have lost their war. <laughs> there will be no republic in Scotland this day. It will be as God intended. A queen on the throne. Then there is work to be done. See, all are rewarded. David! David, I need your hand. At your command, Majesty. There are dispatches to write, orders to counsel, and so much to do. Come, my friend, come. Some war? Some victory? No one regrets it more than I, sir. A victory without blood is like taking a woman without a fight. Oh, I wouldn't know. I've never had to take a woman. They're quite happy to give themselves. It's just as well. What does that mean? Whatever you take it to mean. You think well of yourself? Have a care. I can call on a dozen knights to have you taken. Oh, is that how you do with the ladies? That's enough, Bothwell. Or oh, what? You don't even have the balls to see off we Davy Rizzio. What are you saying? I'm saying your wife has kicked you out of bed. And your own father, Lennox, has left the court because you're such a, a whoremongering, pox-ridden, wine-sodden apology for a man. You're not even a proper king. You're just your wife's hand puppet. I wish you joy of your victory, Majesty. You'll excuse me. I have a man's work to do. Ah! Mary did not pursue her brother and his allies into England and my mistress was happy enough to receive them, as long as they kept quiet. Mary was at last ruling with a king, of sorts, or perhaps of sots, and contrary to gossip, striving to get with child. Yes? Oh, Master Rizzio, how do you spell civilised? My lord. It's a quality rarely met with in these parts, so I understand if it's strange to you. Spell it. C I V I L I S E D. Thank you. Well, what is it? What do you want? Sir, a great rejoicing for the Queen is with child. The doctors are sure of it. May I give you joy? Why did she send you? I beg your pardon, sir. Are you deaf tonight, Master Secretary? Why did she send you? She thought I was in your favour, sir. You were in my bed, like any other whore, Rizzio. Go back to your mistress. Go rub her back. Go! Uh, no, wait. Be so good as to ask Lord Riven if he'll come to me. Uh, they say he is sick, that he may not have long to live in this world. Oh, are you making the decisions now? Is it to be King Davy? You're the bloody messenger! Go tell Riven I want him! A prince for Scotland. 
perhaps. But like many a man in this world, as the mother waxed fat, the king, who suddenly didn't seem to matter so much anymore, waned thin with jealousy. And yet another dose of the pox. Aye, the rat was out, and the rat was hungry for blood. And sign it, your sister queen, Mary. Uh, no, give it to me. It had better be my own hand. And the next, madam? Uh, to my uncle, the Cardinal Guise, I think. I should tell him myself of the happy news. What was that? I don't know, madam. Shall I ask one of your... Henry? Madam? What is this? You're not to move, madam. Guthrie? Majesty. My Lord Riven. I had heard you were sick. I'm glad to see you better, but why are you armoured? This is the Queen's room. Please, Majesty, do not be upset. It is... It is the King's wish. His... His plan. Yes, get on with it. Oh, God... You have come to kill me and kill my babe. Enough. It's not you. No, it's, that's wrong. It's wrong. I, I, I'm not confessed. God, send me a priest from my poor soul. But someone, just do it, will you? Ah, Madam, Majesty, in God's love, help me. Save me. In God's only love. Here you go, Davy. Oh, God, ah. 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 It's all right. It's all right now. No very great thing at all. Mm. You just... Uh, we moment, Master Secretary. That will be done. Guarda quello. We need more candles. More light. More light. Take him out, both of you. Let us help you, Davy. Blood. Blood. I made you a king out of nothing, and this... This is what you do. They laughed at me. Well, they're not laughing now. Nobody laughed, Henry. Another man in my wife's bed... Well, where is that man now? Nobody eh? in my bed but you, Henry. There are many behind me. You have to listen to us, yes? And obey your husband as a good woman should. We've had enough of this tyranny. No tyranny, except in your mind, Henry. Is it mine or bloody Rixio's? You dishonour yourself, if such a thing is possible for such a man. Enough! <laughs> You will stay under our protection until we have decided what best to it's do. It's not seemly. It is not seemly. You drove me to it. <sighs> then, perhaps none in this are without fault. We must all, therefore, come together to seek to remedy this sickness of the state with our best intentions. We must look forward to what will be, and not back to what was. The most dangerous fool in the world is a fool with a plan. And the King of Scotland had a plan. Murray! Your Majesty! I wait upon your wishes. I want you to know that I had nothing to do with this Rizzio business. I would not countenance drawn daggers and spilt blood in front of your sister. When she was with child. Uh, exactly. However, she does appear to be seeing things more sensibly now. She has no choice, I think. I've done no more to her than you would had you won the late rebellion. Now... Here's the thing, Majesty. Perhaps none in this are without fault. We must all therefore come together to seek to remedy this sickness of the state with our best intentions. We must look forward to what will be and not back to what was. Nobly spoken. There's more. 
Don't you see? It's me. What is? I'm the only one who can bring it all together. I was born and brought up in England. I am Scottish. I am at the centre of everything, Murray. It's through me that the nation can be healed. Go on, Majesty. You and your fellow lords of the congregation will be pardoned by the Queen and sit again on the Privy Council, which will be rearranged to ensure the national establishment of the true Protestant religion. I thought you were... With a firm alliance between your side and ours, there will be peace and prosperity. England will be happy. And you, my lord, you will have what? A full pardon for those misguided souls involved in the Rizzio culling, and... And... The Crown Matrimonial. The Privy Council will gift me equal rights to the Queen in all matters of state. Ah, uh, it's a big ask. I want to be a real king. Can you persuade the Queen to offer pardons to all? Uh, trust me, I'm irresistible to women. She still loves me, you know. And besides, we have her in our power. Your father, Lennox? He keeps his position and lands and gives you total support. And the Earl of Bothwell? Oh, didn't I say? You get Bothwell. Do what you like with him. They came home all the rebels, and my Mary was their prisoner. Oh, no one said it, but everyone knew it. But they did not know Mary. And as for her husband, the king... Madam, may I enter? Of course you may, Henry. You are my husband. You may always enter. Uh, uh, yes, um... Thank you. <clears throat> uh, I have the pardons here for you to sign. For my brother and the rebel lords? Yes. Gladly, if you wish. But have you thought... Please sit by me, Henry. This is Scotland. Well, I know that. My feet are cold. <laughs> Once Murray and the others have what they want, they don't need you anymore, do they? But they promised to get me the... They promised loyalty to me as Queen. The only way to rule Scotland is to balance out the parties, the power and the greed and not believe one of them above the other. Who can you trust? The mother of your child. See? Feel here. Our baby, Henry. You're a beautiful girl, Mary. And you're my man, Henry. Mm. Mm, God, if only you weren't with child. My sweetheart, us Scots lassies can turn our hands to any number of tasks, did you not know? <laughs> <laughs> and then everything changed. I present to you, my lords, a prince. James, the sixth of that name, heir to the throne of Scotland and our dearly beloved son. God save the prince! God save the prince! God save the prince! God save the prince! The calf is born. What good then the bull? Majesty, the ambassador. Oh. Ambassador. Be at your ease. I come to congratulate your majesty on this momentous occasion. <laughs> and your mistress? I speak in England's name. She is glad this thing is settled and truly glad for her sister queen. And for the king, of course. This babe has done what many sage men could not. Brought Scotland together in joy and hope. Unofficially... I am glad for you, madam, and glad for the peace, but I wonder, all this amity amongst... Old enemies. Can it last? 
Oh, I hope to make it so. But will your brother and Bothwell ever be friends? Not in these times, but they may both support Prince James in times to come. And yet, and yet... And yet, Randolph? Riven, and a number of others, a large number of others, are less than happy at the manner in which Henry Darnley has sidestepped the responsibility for... Well, his actions in the Rizzio case. And they're not his only enemies. Indeed, I doubt he has a friend in the country. A pardon was given to all, and the king has sworn his innocence. Yeah, and I will presently fly away to the Isles of Joy and live on milk and honey, or at least sack and syllabub. Madam, I have only your best interests at heart. When they coincide with England's best. Your husband must be directed well by those who care for him. Directed and protected. The king is sick. I will keep him close and see he is carefully nursed. But what if he will not be directed or protected? He is his own man, after all. Yeah, he is willful, true. Randolph, I told him Scotland must be ruled by consensus. But if I have learnt one great thing since I came back, it is this. Put two Scotsmen in a room and you'll have a fight. Put one and he'll stab himself in the foot and call it a win. This is not France, and this is not England, and those who think there is any similarity at all are wrong. If I am to rule, and it is God's will that I do, then I... Then, Majesty, I must leave you. I'm sure you need rest. <laughs> Women have had babies before, Ambassador. It is no great thing. The, the succession settle is a very great thing indeed. I need a strong hand, Randolph. I need the strongest hand there is to be had. Ambassador! Well, are you here, my Lord Bothwell? As you see me, so I am. I have never pretended to be otherwise. I have matters of state that concern the Queen, if you'll... Uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Ambassador, a moment. Lord Murray, I am at your service. I doubt it. But am I right? Is he in with her? I take it you mean the Earl of Bothwell? Yes, he is. Unwise. The man is ambitious. <laughs> and you aren't? Not for myself, but because of myself. Uh, do you want to open that for me? I can do a better job of running this country. For the Queen? For Scotland and England. She's unstable, you know. Lost her temper because someone sent Darnley a spaniel. Why didn't she get it? Why him? She's the same with Bothwell. She sees him. She wants him. Women. They can't help it. And what does Bothwell want? The throne, of course. No chance of that, surely. She'll give it to him. We should have listened better to John Knox. Mm -hmm. I heard Goodman Knox was sniffing around a 15-year-old maid for his nightly entertainment nowadays. Might be time to put a bit of clear water between you. And uh, as for the rest, my lord, I think things are settled. Let us all pray they stay so. The wise man prays for what is possible, that his prayers may be answered. Ah, so uh, what do you pray for, my lord? I pray for the prince. Because? God has blessed us with another. There is a choice now, Ambassador, that might suit all tastes in this matter. Ah, we do live in interesting times, my lord. So we do. Excuse me. I don't sleep alone. Hmm. I see the Queen tomorrow, and the key stays in my hand. Off with you, sweetheart. <laughs> mm. oh, oh, oh. God. oh no. Oh. Oh. 
Draws. Oh. Uh, you're in the name of... Yeah. Is it done? Yes. You walk in hell tonight. Come on, you know what to get caught in the blaster. Oh, God, Christ. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God. Here I go. Doing here, man. The hell. Good place to find you then. Oh, no, 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 look, look, look. Look at what I said. I didn't have anything to do with Rizzio. I meant. That you did. That you planned the thing and that now you're lying through what teeth the pox has left you. Right? It was politics. So is this. <coughs> you weak English sense. Politics. Scottish style. We spell it R-E-V-E-N-G. So, that happened. It was as I have spoken. The popish bitch bearing the flaming brand of the whore of Rome had lost her senses through her womanly parts. This Mary hath built here a new Rome, evil, depraved, and without the law of man or God. And she was 16, not 15, and we're going to get married. And I had absolutely nothing to do with it, really. I thought the man was a cop, and he was, but Bothwell doesn't kill people in that way. If you're my enemy, look for me standing in front of you. No, that was Murray's work. She knew. In some way, she knew what that bastard Bothwell was planning. But you had nothing to do with it. I don't know anymore, Flam, what's up and what's down. Sometimes... What the mind knows, it keeps a very fast secret from the heart. All I know is that my heart is my own, and it is true. And if I did nothing, I did nothing to stop it, either. And then... Oh. Then? Oh. Murray, Riven, Lennox, Argyle. How can that be? They are enemies all. They are men first, and came out of the mist of Hibernia and killed the king. And now they want to kill the queen and rule the land in the name of the babe. What to do? Live, Flam. Whilst I breathe, they cannot in all clear conscience take power. And whilst I rule, then God's writ still runs in the land. But how to stay alive in this world? Now there's the thing, the very thing of it. Staying alive. It was, in the end, the only thing she could do. And the worst possible thing she could do. And yet somehow, it was her. All or nothing. Find the strongest man in Scotland, convince herself she loved him as much as she needed him, and, with his forces, face down for good her enemies and confound her critics. I tell you, Majesty, I believe there are three worlds, and one, God rules, and one, Satan, and in this one, power. And power resides in the edge of a sword, in a battery of cannon, and the courage to strike the final blow. It is what I have come to believe. The arguments will never cease until there is no argument to be had. The Queen rules by God's command, 
To go against the Queen is to go against God. Whatever the Kirk and Mr. Knox may say. And the woman? What does she say? When I came back, I asked myself, who am I? Who is Mary lost in the mist? And? She is just mist now. Nothing else remains. There is only the Queen. And to go against the Queen must bring down upon the heads of all the certainty of the wrath of God. Could it be done? By God's hand on earth it could. And yet I cannot lead an army. You can inspire an army. And by Christ, I can lead her. <laughs> do we dare? If we do not dare, we do not deserve. And the risk? That's what makes it all worth doing. <laughs> all or nothing. The whole world or... A world of stones. To bruise and turn the heel. Mary, you are magnificent. Marry me and we shall take this world and make it ours. <laughs> oh, by God, they love us. They do, for now. Money and whiskey can make a miracle. Bollocks. Do you know what they see? They see a king who is not afraid to be a king and a beautiful woman who is not afraid to be his queen. They see us here proud, no excuses, we are what we are. <laughs> and be damned to those dogs who yap at our ankles. Not a king yet. And those dogs have a bite. And I have a sword. And we have an army. And what is it worth fighting for? Is not worth having, huh? <laughs> hey! Ah. Smile, woman, smile. Let them see what a king and queen look like as they go by. Mary, if you're a beauty in your clothes, unwrapped, you're a goddess. I can see why Donnelly wanted to get back into your bed. Tonight, I'm tired. Tonight is our wedding, sweetheart. There will be time. Lots of time. We'll, we'll turn like the present. But not this time. I'm... And I say yes. This time, no. Would you take what is not freely given? You only have to wait. What isn't worth fighting for isn't worth having. And you, Mary, are so very worth having. <laughs> Did he love my sister? Bothwell loved nothing other than himself. When he saw her, he saw himself in her eyes as master. When he saw Scotland, he saw himself in her locks as king. Better by far a confederacy of self-interest than a tyrant intent on stamping his image of blood and war upon the nation. She would never forgive him for what he took unbidden. But in his way, in his time, he was a splendid bastard of a man. It was as if... <sighs> but there it is. As if. The land of as if. Where anything is possible and nothing sacred except power and who holds it. And the lords of the congregation knew that as well as any. You wind the clock. You hear it tick, see the hands move inevitably towards tomorrow, and you know what tomorrow will bring. And you know, with a knowledge you can never, ever unknow, <laughs> that it was you who wound the clock. Madam! How do we stand? In this mess, we don't know. We... They could be a mile distant, uh, 50 yards. There was a mist on the day I came back to this country. We could not land. Well, today we cannot fight. Until the sun burns it off, we cannot even see where we stand. And God did send a great mist to confound the whore and our whore master and scatter their people across the land. Then did he bring the sun to burn them and sear their throats with thirst, as if already they burned in hell. Majesties. Randolph, what are you doing here? Observing. 
I hope you find it entertaining. I never find pointless killing entertaining, my lord. You know you've lost the day before it begins. Go to hell, Ambassador. Or to England, since they're pretty much the same. We stay. Go on, Randolph. If you do not know it, your men do. They've been trickling away all morning. They would rather live to fight again or go home to their farms and their families. This road leads to one end only. You think death scares me? Wait, Bothwell. Are you certain, Randolph? Your brother and the lords offer you terms. Your people may go. Your husband may go out of the country. And you will give yourself up to them. As queen? Never. I will never give up my country or my queen. Hush now, sir. As their prisoner, then? Whilst you live, you fight. We'll attack! Piper! Send the advance! There is no Piper. There is no army. An idiot boy and a stray dog. <laughs> Ambassador, go back to my brother and his lords. Tell them I will agree. Bollocks to the hug. Murder! Murder! Any one of you, command sinless man to man. Single combat, damn you, is not a man amongst you. Feast me! Feast my sword, damn you all, here I stand. For my queen and my country both will stand. Come out, you bloody cowards, steal on steel, some limp blood, all or nothing. Are you feared to die? Come out! Face me, damn you! Face me! Face me! There's a moon tonight, Jamie. Surely you'll not murder me in the moonlight. Doesn't the deed crave the dark? Stop that nonsense, Mary. There'll be no murder done here. Why put the lady in a castle on an island if we wanted her in the lake? Well, you do have what you want now. What you always wanted. I wanted good government, Mary. Not Darnley or Bothwell. Or me. You would have done if only... Only what? Is it that complicated, Jamie? Aye, that it is. You'll have to give it up, you know, in favour of the boy. There'll be a regency. And a regent? Aye. How long do you think you'll survive, Jamie? Long enough, God willing, to put this country back on an even path. And if I choose not to give it up? You won't. You don't know. I'm afraid I do. You remember, in France, when I told you I was frightened of many things, but not of the ordinary folk, they haven't gone away, Jamie. Not from the old religion and not from the Queen. You have to forget all that now. It's over. Bothwell? Time to get off, Mary. He's in the Low Countries, in prison. Some girl, breach of promise. Said he'd marry her. He ran, they got him. Pull away. Goodbye, Majesty. For the last time. I won't. I won't submit, Jamie. I know. That's what breaks my heart. You will not, and yet you must. Or here you will stay in your enchanted castle forever. Poor Queen. Poor Queen. All the stories, all the roads lead but to one place. Mm, you were with her. When England finally killed my Mary. Mm. Yes. Northampton, 18 years after that last hurrah. Years of exile, imprisonment, of England's web woven ever closer around my queen. 
The ears of graying hair and thickening ankles of pointless embroidery. Yeah, but there is another. Aye, Tom. He rules in Scotland. And whilst his mother faced the axe, what did he do? No one knows where the wind bloweth or where it listeth. Though they hear the sound thereof, they cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. But James, King of Scotland, knows and keeps his own counsel. You have a fine garden, Tommy. Is that what you do now you're an old man? I make honey, my dear. I make honey. Where once you made mischief. <laughs> I think on the whole, I prefer honey. In It Came In With A Lass by Mike Walker, Mary was played by Jeannie Spark, John Knox by Brian Cox, Darnley, Tom Myson, Bothwell, Michael Burtonshaw, and Murray by John Mackay. Randolph was Bruce Alexander, Flamina, Wumi Musaku, Rizzio, David Seddon, and Riven was Sean Murray. Other parts were played by Ben Crow and Paul Stonehouse. The directors were Jessica Dromgoul and Sasha Yevtushenko. <laughs>